Welcome to the beginner's guide for the Division 2 in 2023. We have covered a lot so far, and if you have missed anything, there's a playlist linked down below in the video description to catch up. In this video today, I'm going to be guiding you through builds. Builds are very important in the Division 2. The type of game it is requires you to piece builds together quite like a puzzle in order to complete tougher end game content. If you want to play the game on higher difficulties, then you're going to need a good build for it. If you want to complete raids on the Division 2, then you're going to need the right builds for that. And if you want to complete the legendary content, again, you're going to want to have the best builds for that too. Now in this guide, this is not about me telling you what these builds are. This is for people that want to indulge in this content and enjoy the content around making builds. It's one of the funnest things to do in the game. Furry crafting, putting builds together, testing builds out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work. We all have different play styles and the build diversity on The Division 2 is absolutely insane. There are so many different builds that you can create for different sorts of content and there's multiple builds for that content. Honestly, you can spend hours and hours and hours creating builds, testing them and finding which build suits you and there's loads you can save on multiple characters. Some people end up with four characters with like, I don't know, 30, 40 different builds. So if this is you, this video is going to help you just as a beginner to the game to understand builds in the Division 2 and how they work. But if this is not you and you're not too fussed about the game and you just want to create builds to get the content done and you're happy with builds that work, then YouTube is a great place to show you these builds. There's a Google. I will go over a few builds in this video later on. And I do builds myself. You can just literally Google them, piece them together and they should work. But regardless of what type of player you are, whether you are going to indulge in this content or just follow a YouTube video, this video is going to be great just to give you a good understanding about how builds work on the Division 2. First, I just want to go through the different rarity of items that you can find on the game to fill your loadouts and create a build. As soon as you start playing the game, there's grey gear, but in endgame, this isn't a thing. And the lowest rarity of item you can find is common. You'll know an item is common because it'll be green in colour. Next, there are rare items which are blue in colour. There are epic items as well which are purple in colour. But the loot that you are going to be looking to find in Endgame is high end and that is yellow or gold in colour. Not only this, but you can also find exotic items. Exotic items do work a little bit differently, but we'll explain all that as we go further on in the video. And in addition to all of those different rarities, you can also find gear sets, which is a different shade of green, and named items. Named items are versions of high-end items, but they just have better stats on them. Again, we'll explain this as we go on. Now, once you are in Endgame, you can forget about common, rare, or epic items. You're not going to need any of these. You'll see them a lot throughout your main playthrough or whatnot. But at Endgame, you just want to focus on high-end, gear set, named, and exotic items. If the loot drops that you're getting are of the lower rarity items, you do just need to up your difficulty. You shouldn't need to go too high, though. I believe if you play the game on hard, which is relatively easy, to be honest with you, high-end is the majority drop. So what is a build? A build is a collection of items that you put together to work alongside one another to alter your stats and there's loads of different variants available. As I said at the start of the video, it's pretty much like a puzzle. And what you want to do is understand what different gear pieces are in the game, what different weapons are in the game. You need to understand all the different talents, all the different stats. And understanding all of this is going to enable you to piece together the puzzle for your build and what you want to create. Now, each build, you're going to have to select a specialization. So have a look at your specialization. Have a look at the skill tree. There's loads of different perks involved in this. And you'll want to pick a specialization that kind of works towards your build or what you're trying to achieve. You'll have to select a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, a sidearm, and then six gear pieces. A mask, chest piece, holster, knee pads, gloves, and backpack. And before we go any further, I just want to discuss how different variants of gear work, starting with exotics. Exotics are some of the best items in the game. You can get weapons and you can get gear pieces. But when you're filling out a build, you can only have one exotic weapon 
on your loadout. So you can see I've got an exotic eagle bearer here as my primary. This means I cannot have an exotic in my secondary or sidearm slot. And it is the same with the gear. I don't have an exotic item here on this build, but if I were to have one, let's say I had an exotic mask there, I wouldn't then be able to have another exotic piece in any of the other slots. However, I could have one exotic piece in one of these six slots here and an exotic weapon. That is fine. And next we have brand sets. There are loads of different brand sets in the game. And on this build in particular, I am using four different brand sets. You can tell because of all of the different icons. This icon on the mask here of the fox signifies that's a Fenris piece. You've got this anchor, which says that's a Providence brand set piece. There's a GS here for Grupo Sombra. And you've got this like flame shield sort of icon for Overlord. Each brand set comes with special perks depending how many items you have on your build. So on this build, I got one piece of Fenris. You can see on the right side there, for having one piece of that, I'm going to get 10% assault rifle damage. Now, if I had two pieces, I'd have 20% reload speed, and for three pieces of Fenris on a build, I'd also get 20% stability. But they're greyed out because I've only got one piece, so I'm not activating those bonuses of the brand set. You can see it again with this group of Sombra gloves that I've got on the build. I have one group of Sombra piece, and with the group of Sombra brand set, for one piece, it gives you 15% critical hit damage. If I had a second piece of Grupo on the build, I get 15% explosives damage. And for three pieces, I could have 15% headshot damage. Now, I only wanted the one piece of Grupo on this build for the critical hit damage. But for the explosives damage and the headshot damage, I don't really care for that. So I don't go for any more Grupo pieces because of that. But that one piece bonus is very good for the build. But you can see here where I have used more than one piece. I got three pieces of Providence on the build. And you can see that all three of the brand set bonuses are unlocked. I've got 15% headshot damage for having one piece Providence, 10% critical hit chance for two piece Providence, and 15% critical hit damage for three piece Providence. And the final piece I have on this build is the Overlord piece. With Overlord, that comes with 10% rifle damage, which works on this build very nicely. If I had two pieces of Overlord, it'd give me 20% accuracy, and if I had a third piece, it'd give me 10% weapon handling. Every brand set works the same. They have their own perks and you can look at all the different brand sets to mix and match and try and piece a build together that you want to try and create. For this build in particular, what mattered to me was that I had headshot damage, critical hit damage, and I was buffing my AR and I was buffing my rifle. So the Overlord knee pads buff my rifle. The Grupo is buffing my critical hit damage. Fenris is buffing my assault rifle damage. And the Providence is buffing my headshot damage, credit chance, and credit damage, which all works well with the build. Brand sets are also going to come with their own core attributes. So they're going to have the set bonuses, but then they'll have the core attributes as well. And on all four of these brand sets that I use on this build, the core attribute is weapon damage. This will always be the same on these brand sets. So Fenris, Providence, Grupo, or Overlord, whenever you find one of these items, they're already, always going to come with a core attribute weapon damage. It is then the attributes underneath that, the two attributes there, headshot damage and credit damage, that are gonna be random rolls. You could get anything. You could get red rolls, which are like DPS sort of rolls. You could get blue rolls, which are survivability sort of rolls, or you could get yellow rolls, which are skill orientated. So this is something else that you wanna think about when you're piecing together your builds. What sort of stats do you want? Like I said, this build, I want to focus around crit damage headshot damage and improving the damage of the weapons I was using. So it was very important to me that I had red attribute rolls and I focused on crit hit damage and headshot damage there as you can see. I've got it on every single piece. Apart from the Frox's Prayer which we'll talk about in a moment, you can see I've got exactly what I want. And we'll talk more about farming for builds later on in the video. And finally, with brand sets on the chest piece and the backpack, you'll notice that they also come with talents. These talents can be different and there's so many on the game. So on this backpack that I've got here, I've got Perfect Vigilance, which increases the total weapon damage by 25%, taking damage disables this buff. This talent works well on this build because it's all about damage, so that is really helping me. And on the chest piece there, I've got Perfect Glass Cannon. All damage I deal is amplified by 30%, all damage I take is amplified by 60%. I have to say this is one of my favorite talents and again it works very well with what I'm trying to achieve here by just outputting my damage to the maximum that I can. Now when it comes to farming these pieces and the attribute roles, it's important to know 
that you can have one recalibration on every piece that you get. Just come over here to recalibration station next to the crafting bench and go over to the recalibration station tab. On this, you're able to edit any weapons or gear that you have. So if I just go into my gear, I've probably already edited this. But my Fenris mask, for example, it's got weapon damage, headshot damage, credit damage on it. And um, let's just say the credit damage wasn't that. Let's say it came with a blue roll of health. Now, if I've picked up that mask and it had two of the three rolls that I wanted, I'd bring it to this table, I'd go into it, and if crit hit damage there was health, I'd be able to click on that, take it off, and put credit damage on it instead. Once I've made one roll, there's only one roll that I can do. And as you can see here, earlier on, whenever I got this, I rolled headshot damage onto it. Everything else is grayed out now. So once you have done one calibration, just remember you can't do another calibration again, although you can recalibrate the attribute that you did originally recalibrate. So what I mean by that is because I've rolled headshot damage on this already, if I wanted to make changes again, although I can't do credit damage or weapon damage, I can take headshot damage back off and put something else on. This works the same with every other item in the game except for exotics and named items. For exotics, you won't even find them on the recalibration station because you can't recalibrate them at all. You are stuck with whatever attributes and talents come on an exotic item. But for named items, if we just go and find one of those, I was wearing some named knee pads on that build I was showing you, the Fox's Prayer. These can be recalibrated, but with named items, they always come with an additional special sort of perk or attribute. And with the Fox's Prayer knee pads, that is a roll of damage to target out of cover at 8%. I'll discuss named items more in a moment, but damage to target out of cover is just for this named item from Fox's Prayer. It comes as knee pads, and you cannot roll this into your library. You can't take it off of this piece. However, it is a very good attribute. You can't farm this attribute on any other brand pieces either. Damage to target out of cover is not actually an attribute that you can roll onto anything. It is only for this piece. But although you can't roll that off, you can still roll weapon damage off if you want to, or the other attribute that comes in the third slot. So that is basically how brand sets work. There's, as I said, there's loads in the game. It's all about looking at what each brand set does, looking at all the different attributes that you can get, looking at all the core attributes that come with each brand set, and just deciding how you want to do your build. The only other real decision that you have is what weapons you're going to use. And there's loads of different weapons in the game. You've got ARs, LMGs, SMGs, rifles, snipers, whatever you want. So depending on the weapon that you choose or the, the two weapons that you choose might tailor what brand sets you go for because they all have different perks for different sort of weapons as well. And like with brand set chest piece and backpacks that come with talents, weapons also come with talents as well. Talents are going to be a big part of deciding how you're going to do your build. There's so many different talents for your chest piece, backpack, and weapons. You can kind of link them all up to make them work together, or you can kind of make a few different things work. Again, going back to the recalibration station, if we head over to the recalibration library here, here is a great way of seeing what talents are available for different type of weapons and on your chest and your backpack. We've already spoke about the recalibration library in a previous beginner's guide, but a quick recap, you basically want to max this out with max rolls, talents, and just fill it all out. Once you've done that, you use what's on this library to recalibrate what you've already got. And it's just as simple as finding pieces with max rolls or the talents that you don't have in this library, and just bringing them here to dismantle, to go into the library, to save the talent or save the attribute. And once you have them in there, you can take a look at them. So if we go on rifles here, you can see all the different core attributes there. You can see the attributes that you can have rolled on a rifle, whether it's red or yellow. And then we can have a look at what talents are available for a rifle. And there's so many different talents, as you can see. So you want to have a look through these and see what you like the sounds of. Now, personally, for a rifle and a rifle build, I love the boomerang talent here. Critical hits have 50% chance to return the bullet to the magazine. If a bullet is returned to the magazine, the next shot has 40% increased damage. Just judging back to that build I've shown you before, you can see how this talent works with that build. But other talents can work as well. You've got Rifleman, where landing headshots adds a stack bonus of 10% weapon damage for 5 seconds. Max stack is 5, additional headshots refresh your duration. 
But then there's talents that might not work so well. So like close and personal here. Killing a target within 7 meters grants 30% weapon damage for 10 seconds. With a rifle, I'm not killing targets within 7 meters. So it's just not going to work for the build. And you're able to look at all of these different attributes and talents and stats across all the different types of weapons and gear in the game. If you go to the body here, the body armor, you can look at all the different chest talents that you can find. And if you go to the backpack, you can look at all the different backpack talents that you can find. Talents are only on chest pieces and backpacks. They're not on any other gear piece. The only exception to that is exotic items. Every exotic will always come with its own talent. And again, talents can be recalibrated. If we go to the recalibration station here and we just take a look at a chest piece, um, I can't use the sacrifice because it's a named one with a named talent. But if we look at this Grupo one here, you can see that I can take off anything that I want from the core attribute to the second attribute, the third slot, or the talent. Again, I can only do one. So if I was to change this talent to something else, I would no longer be able to change anything else on this piece. Weapon damage, crit damage, and crit chance will be locked in, and I'd only be able to change the talent in the future. And the only other thing that you really need to think about when making a build, other than brand sets and exotics and named items and whatnot, is gear sets. Gear sets don't have the three piece set bonus that brand sets do. Instead, they have four piece bonuses. So where with brand sets, you get a one piece bonus with a gear set, you don't. You've got to at least put two pieces on to unlock its first bonus. And using hardwired as an example here, for two pieces of that, it's going to give me 15% skill aced. When I have a third piece of hardwired on, it's going to give me 15% skill damage and 30% repair skills. And when I put a fourth piece of this gear set on, I get a talent called Feedback Loop. Whenever you use or cancel a skill, your other skill's cooldown is automatically reduced by 30 seconds while increasing total skill damage and repair by 10% for 20 seconds is the talent I get with Hardwired. And Feedback Loop can only occur once every 20 seconds. Every gear set is different. It has a different two-piece bonus, three-piece bonuses, and the fourth piece talents. And in addition, the gear sets also still come with backpack talents and chest talents. You can see on this hardwired backpack, it has a talent there, short circuit, which decreases the feedback loop cooldown from 20 seconds to 10 seconds. Another difference you may have noticed with this gear piece is that it's missing one attribute. That's the other difference. With brand sets, you get the three piece bonuses for wearing them, and then you get a core attribute with two minor attributes. With gear sets, you get the one core attribute and the one minor attribute. And when it comes to recalibration, they still work the same, but with the talents on the backpack and the chest, these cannot be changed. So quite often when making builds around gear sets, you'll use four pieces of that gear set along with two pieces from different brand sets. And unlike brand sets and weapons, gear sets don't come with named items. You only get named items for different brand sets and different weapons. And I think I've already touched on named pieces, but I'm using one on this here as well. You can see that's a Providence piece, but it's got like a gold title to it called The Sacrifice. This is the named chess piece for the Providence brand set, and it always comes with perfect glass cannon. You can never change this talent, as I've already explained, so you can't recalibrate that. You can recalibrate some of the other attributes, but basically, perfect glass cannon is just an enhancement on normal glass cannon. I can still just go and farm a Providence chess piece with just glass cannon on it if I wanted to. But the normal glass cannon is only 25% amplified damage for 50% damage taken. And that's basically how named items work. They're just a buff on the original talent or attributes, and you're not able to take those attributes off of those pieces when recalibrating. You can have as many named items on a build as you want. As you can see, I've got the Sacrifice here, and I've got the Fox's Prayer, which is the named Overlord item. The last things to discuss now really about creating your build is just the type of grenade you can choose. Depending on the specialization you wear, you can equip a different grenade or you can just keep the original concussion. And it's the skills that you've got as well. There's many different skills in the game. You've got two that you can select from to wear at all times. And when out of combat, you can always switch in and out of these. There's so many different skills and depending on your build may depend on what skills that you use. So for example, I normally run DPS builds, which are all red. I have no utility roles on the build, which means it's pointless me making a build that's looking to 
you know, output damage from a turret or a drone. They can still be a good distraction, but for my DPS build, I normally always run something like the Reviver Hive, which is just here, or say like with that a decoy or a chem launcher. It's really up to you. You can really kind of tailor your build around the skills that you use. Like if you wanted to, you could create a full-on skill build where your turrets and your drones are doing insane damage, which means you can just practically sit behind cover and chill. But there's so many different sort of builds that you can make. And if we just go over to the stats here, you can kind of see all the different avenues you can sort of head down. You can see total critical hit chance and damage on the build. So if you're aiming for that sort of build, you want to get these as high as you can. You can see your headshot damage on the build as a whole. Again, if you're aiming to make like a sniper build with increased headshot damage, you'll be looking to get this as high as you can. You've got accuracy stats, stability stats. These again can be improved if you're sort of making a build, I don't know, around an LMG or a gun that you like, but it's got a bit of a kick to it. You can get these stats increased. As we keep on going, we've got armor stats in case you want to make a tank build. You want a higher number here. There's armor on kill that you can work on on a build. Armor regeneration. Health on kill. Incoming repairs. Protection from elites. Explosive resistance. Hazard protection. So all these sort of stats here, if you're going to be doing missions or raids and you need a sort of hazard build so you can survive a hazard, having a high amount of hazard protection is really going to help you there. And further down again is skill haste, how quick your skills come back and whatnot, which is important for a skill build. You really do just want to take in all of the different items and brand sets and talents that are on the game and just piece together what you think will be the perfect build for you and what you want to achieve with it. And once you've done that, all that's left really is the mods and optimizing the build to make sure it's given out as much as it possibly can. With mods, you get mods on your weapons, your mask, your backpack, and your chest piece. Gloves, knee pads, and holsters don't come with mod slots unless they are improvised, which we will go over when we get to the crafting station. But in general, you'll always be putting mods on these three pieces here and your weapons. You just do that by pressing square. You go to your empty mod slot, if it is empty, and you throw on a mod. Mods come in the form of red core mods, blue core, or yellow core for utility. And you could have guessed, red means more damage basically, blue means more survivability, and yellow core will be for your skills. There's all sorts of different mods that will help with your build, and on this build in particular, you can see I've got a 12% critted damage mod on the mask, a 12% critted damage on the backpack, and a 12% critted damage on the chest. You can see I'm trying to get as much critted damage out of the build as possible. And for the weapons, to mod them, again you just press square. And you've got all your different mod slots available for that weapon. Each weapon is different. Each weapon can have different mods on them. And there's some weapons that can take more mods than others. You just want to go through each mod slot and look at the mods that you've got available to you to see what's going to help you and your build. The only time you can't mod a weapon is if it's an exotic. Exotics come with their own mods and they are locked in place. This isn't the same for exotic gear pieces though. You can still mod exotic gear pieces. So, you've got your build together, you've got all your mods on, you farm through everything, you've got all the attributes how you like it, and all you want to do now is get the most out of the build. Notice how with my primary, secondary, and the sidearm here, all of those attributes are maxed out. I go down to the mask, most of them are maxed there. My backpack, I got a little bit of work to do, I'm just 0.3 short on the weapon damage. My gloves, that needs a little bit of work. My chest piece is all maxed out. My holster is nearly all maxed out, and my knee pads need a lot of work there. The critic damage is only at 8.2. So how do you improve this? Well, obviously, we've spoke about the recalibration station, and if you've got any rolls left that you can do on any of those pieces, you can go ahead and do that and roll a max roll on if you have it in your library. But if you've already done your roll, you're not going to be able to roll anything that isn't maxed. So that's where you go to optimization. On optimization, you are able to optimize any attribute that you want. So if we go to those knee pads that are really, really bad, you can see here that I can't optimize weapon damage because it's already maxed out. With critical hit damage, I'm able to use resources to make this higher. So we just hold square on that. That has taken it to 8.4%. I can optimize it again. I can take it from 8.4% to 9%. So I'll just hold square again. And then it gives me another upgrade to 9.6%. Do 
just keep on doing this until you max out the attribute but it does cost a lot of resources i've already ran out with one roll to go to get it to the max of 12 percent in my last beginner's guide video about the watch mule that is going to become very handy for optimizing builds and the idea is that you grind out all these resources so you, you can just come to this table and optimize your build so the whole build is maxed out. Now just for a bit of advice, I would say to try and get these attributes as high as you can. You don't really want to start optimizing with like critical hit damage as low as this was. It's going to soak up so many resources. What you want to do is try and get items like I've got my backpack here. You can see I've already got max critical hit damage on it. And the weapon damage only requires 0.3% to max it out. That is the best way to do it. Try and get your rolls as high as you can before you come to the table. If you get lucky like I do with this piece, I can just do the one optimization to make it absolutely god rolled. And once God rolled, it's going to tell you item is fully researched. You are able to optimize any item or any attribute in the game, including exotics. Exotics will cost more though. So before we move on to the end of the video now, where I'm going to give you some advice on what sort of builds to make for end game content and show you a few. I just want to discuss weapon mods a little bit more because weapon mods can be quite important. And unless you've really hammered endgame, it's quite likely you've not got all of the mods unlocked. If we head over to the crafting station here, just to the right in the top right corner is your mods. I've got 85 out of 85 and that's what you want. Once you find a mod, you'll just come in here and you'll just craft the mod. And once it's crafted, it's unlocked forever. Whenever you go over to your weapon and you go to mod it, they'll just be available. If they're not unlocked here and you haven't crafted them, they won't be available in that menu. Just make sure you work on this. Just come away from the crafting station and go over to the quartermaster. And there's some mods that you can unlock here as you're going through the game. If you just go over to perks, you'll see some mods here that you can get with shade tech. So make sure you unlock those. And then the rest of the mods are random drops from control points. You've got to do control points at, at least level 3. And to make them level 3 is really easy. Just go into global settings, change the global difficulty and switch it to challenging. Once you've accepted that and confirmed settings, you'll notice that every control point on the map is now a level 3 control point. And on completion of these, you'll get a random mod unlock or blueprint unlock as well if you need any more blueprints. And in addition to this, you can also do the weekly invaded missions. Every week there's some invaded missions. You can see I've got three on my map right now. As I complete them, I can then complete the invaded stronghold, which is capital building this week. And once I've completed all of that, I can do tidal basin. So there's five missions in total there. Each mission is going to give me a random mod unlock or a random blueprint. So just make sure you're farming them to unlock all of your different types of mods. And you're also going to get blueprints while you're doing it as well. Blueprints are great because if you're just looking for a specific item, so let's go into weapons here. Let's say that I wanted a FAMAS and I was struggling to get one to drop for me. As long as I've got enough resources, I can just come and craft a FAMAS. It's going to give me random rolls, so I might need to craft quite a few. But if it gives me the rolls that I want, it's a very easy way to get the weapon that I need. And it works the same with gear. You can go and check your masks. There's loads of different brand set masks here that you can craft just in case that's what you're looking for and it's not dropping for you. And as you unlock exotics, you even get exotic blueprints as well. Not every gear piece can be crafted for every brand set. For an example, there's a brand set called Murakami. If you go to chess pieces, you'll notice that Murakami is not here. You can't craft it. So if there is a certain piece that you want to craft, just check that it's here. And if it is, craft away and see if you get lucky but if it's not you are going to have to farm for it and finally before we come away from the crafting bench i mentioned improvised gear earlier there's blueprints for improvised gear you can get an improvised mask chest backpack gloves knee pads or holster and when you craft one of these they are special i'm going to craft something different in a chest piece to show you why if we go to the holster and head over to the improvised holster and craft one of those You'll notice what's special about this item, although it's not a branded item, so you get no brand set bonus on it. You do still get a core attribute and two minor attributes, but you have an empty gear mod slot. Holsters, knee pads and gloves don't come with gear mod slots, but improvised ones do. 
This adds a lot more build diversity and when you're really trying to structure a build down a particular path, say like a protection from elite build, protection from elite mods are a thing. So you could use these improvised pieces to add more protection from elite mods to your build to increase that stat. They really do add more diversity to build making. I am going to end this build guide video with just some tips of what sort of build I advise you to make, which is a good starting point. But first, I want to show you this the Division 2 builds tool. I'm going to link it down in the video description. It's mxswat.github.io and it's a great tool for creating builds and just putting them together to see what all the different stats are. So starting out at your primary weapon, you can click on this and it brings up all the different weapons in the game. You've got SMGs, LMGs, pistols, or whatever you want. It shows you the exotics, it shows you all the named items for that particular type of weapon, and then all the other weapons there too. These are all great because you can get them in any rarity, but as we said, you will be looking for them in high end. But these are all the different SMGs you can have. There's all the different LMGs you can have, pistols, assault rifles, rifles, marksman rifles, and shotguns. You're able to look at every exotic for whatever type of weapon you want, what the talent is, any named item and what their talent is, and any other weapon that falls under that bracket. Once you pick an item, so let's say I want to go with an assault rifle and I just want to go with a regular ACR. It'll fill the spot for you and it then lets you choose what you want on it. So it comes with assault rifle damage anyway, that can't be changed, that's always going to drop with that and it's always going to drop with health damage as well. But the third attribute is random. So here you can select what attribute you want that to be. So I'm just going to go credit damage, say. You're then able to have a look at all the different talents that you can have on this assault rifle and what you prefer. Once you've picked one, let's just pick Optimus as it's there. You can then select a mod for it and go through all the different mods that can go on that weapon. Once you finish with your first weapon, you can move to your second and do the same again. Just go and find another weapon that you want. Let's say we're going to have the Lady Death this time, which is an exotic SMG. And with this, nothing can be changed. You're stuck with the attributes that come with it. You're stuck with the talent that come with it. And you're stuck with the mods. But it's going to save that in space for you. You can pick your sidearm, and then you can go and look at your gear pieces. If you click on mask, it shows you all the different exotics you can have as a mask, the different named items, the different gear sets that you can have, and all of the different brand sets as well. And as you can see, it gives you all of the set bonuses there. So you can have a look at all of this. You can see all the different brand sets and what each brand set come with as a set bonus. Now I've just thrown on anything. I've changed a few attributes about. I've just done that quickly to show you just to the right side of the page here what it also does. It just keeps a track of all the different stats that you're going to have based on what you're picking. So I put a couple of weapon handling stats in there and credit chance credit damage you'll notice over here it's keeping track of my weapon handling and it's keeping track of my credit damage and credit chance if you are aiming for certain aspects of your build you can keep tabs on them here to make sure you're hitting the numbers that you want to reach this is a perfect tool for piecing builds together just seeing all the different brand sets right in front of you all the different weapons all the different named weapons all the different gear sets all the different exotics and you can just piece your build together that you have in mind, just like a puzzle. And once you've finished, you can click on Save Screenshot. You can then download this screenshot to your phone or to your computer. And you've got it right there in front of you when you go out and do your grind. And I have already discussed this in an earlier beginner's guide. But just to quickly go over it for you again, the best way to grind for the gear that you need is Countdown. If you have the expansion, you can go to countdown, you can press on targeted loop by pressing down on the D-pad, and you can grind for exactly what you want. What weapon type you want, or what gear piece you want, or what brand set that you want. You can also grind for gear sets also. Countdown drops a ton of targeted loot, so whatever you set, you're going to get a lot of it, and you'll get a load of other loot as well, which might prove in handy for other sorts of builds. You're going to be getting that much loot. You'll definitely want to make use of your stash. Something I've not covered so far in this beginner's guide. But in your stash, you've got another 300 spaces to store items. So that makes it 300 there, 150 on your character. That's 450 total spaces. And without countdown, your best bet is just targeted loot. From the map, just press up on the D-pad. Every single day this changes. Just look around the map at what is targeted for each mission or each area on that given day. And if there's anything you're looking for, go and grind it. So for example, I might want to farm for Grupo Sombra. Well, that is located here today. 
at bank headquarters. I can keep on playing bank headquarters over and over and I'll get plenty of Grupo drops. Now at this point, if build making is not your thing and you're thinking this is far too complicated, well just start off by watching some videos and just make some builds that people advise. Head over to my YouTube channel homepage, scroll down to the Division 2 builds, Year 4. These are all current builds. You can click on that and I've got so many different builds for you for all sorts of content. To be honest with you, as you start putting builds together from watching videos, you're probably going to get the urge to make your own anyway. And it's going to be some good practice just, to, just by putting some builds together, you know. And it really does increase the longevity of the game. If you're not in love with builds and testing builds out and making builds, it really is what this game is about. And you do need to put some good builds together to take on the tough end game content if that's what you want to do. Raids and legendaries require certain type of builds and you're going to need to get them together and practice with them. But now we're going to end this video on just a couple of builds I do advise you to make. Now I always advise people to have four types of builds. A DPS build for output damage, a tank build so you can be a tank for your team, a skill build because skill builds can just make things very easy, and a healer build because a healer build acts as a support build, you can keep people alive and you can do all sorts of things with it as well. For your healer build or a skill build, you want your build full of skill tiers. You can see this healer build on, on screen now, and it's got skill tier on the mask, chest, holster, knees, gloves, and backpack. It makes it a six skill tier build. And if we take a look at our skills, you can see that they have different stats depending on what skill tier they are. You've got to go into it to actually have a look at all the different stats per skill tier, but this Restore a high, for example, at tier one, the stats are much lower than tier two, and they are much lower than tier three, and so on, all the way up to skill tier six. So, when making a skill build where your skills are your primary focus, it's important to be a skill tier six. And this healer build is actually really easy to make. There's a great gear set that works well with healing, and it's called the Future Initiative set. It gives you repair skills of 30% for two pieces. That is basically how much you're repairing someone. At three pieces, you get skill ace and skill duration. So your skills last longer and come back quicker when they go. And at four pieces, you get ground control, where if your team is at full armor, they're going to gain 15% weapon damage or skill damage. So I just throw four pieces of this on in the mask, chest, holster, and knee pads. That means I also get the chest talent from Future Initiative, which is Tactical Superiority. That increases the ground control damage bonus from 15% to 25%. And the attribute roles I want on a healer build is repair skills, because I want to repair people, you know? So repair skills on the mask, repair skills on the chest, holster, and knees, that's increasing my heals going out to my team. And with the mods as well on the chest, mask, and backpack, they're all repair skills mods as well. With the backpack on a healer build, I always go for Alp Summit because for one piece Alp Summit, you get more repair skills. And the attributes I want is skill aced and repair skills. Again, skill aced is just going to bring my skills back quicker when they go. And the gloves that I love using on a healer build is the exotic BTSU gloves. These can drop anywhere in the game. You can get them from exotic caches as well. And it drops the most on the Camp White Oak mission. They're actually a part of that. And if you keep playing it enough, they will eventually drop from the main boss. You can't change anything on this, but it comes with exactly what I want, which is skill tier, skill aced, and repair skills. And the talent you get with this exotic is transference overclock. Basically, with my hive, if I destroy it, I'm going to put everybody on overcharge. And also, if anybody's used their skills, like the Revive Hives, it's going to refresh them for them. And you may think weapons is not important for a healing build, but the Scorpio Exotic Shotgun is very overpowered. Make sure you grind for this. Again, you can get this from anywhere. Just target loot shotguns and it will eventually drop. You'll definitely want to have that as your primary weapon for a healer build. You're basically going to be adding a lot of debuffs to enemies by shooting them. So it's not about the damage. It's just about adding those debuffs. And your team's going to eventually do more damage to that enemy. It's great for bosses. And one final build I want to have a look at in this video is my legendary tank build. I'm not going to go through it piece by piece here, but I'm just going to explain my thinking about how this build came together and the pieces I used to get there. So I was doing legendary content on the PTS when the new Manning National Zoo came out and Tidal Basin and it was really difficult and I thought a real good tank build with protection from elites would do very, very well. And the idea was is that I wanted to make myself so tanky that I was kind of indestructible. 
Now for this, on Legendary, I felt I'd need a lot of protection from elites, because most of the enemies were elites. I need some form of self-healing, because I couldn't just rely on my healer. And I wanted explosive resistance as well, because there's so many explosives in Legendary. And this is what I came up with, the Catharsis Mask here. Basically the vicious cycle, when you take enough damage, you drop like a little healing bubble that heals you. That worked perfect for what I wanted. Two pieces of RNK, that gave me incoming repairs and explosive resistance. I did think incoming repairs would have worked towards a Catharsis Mask, but it doesn't. But the explosive resistance is exactly what I wanted on the build. And then the chest piece I used was Bellstone Armory. This gave me 1% armor regen, which was another form of healing. So with that, I got armor regen and explosive resistance as the attribute rolls on my gear. You can see that on the chest piece there. You can see I've got armor regen and explosive resistance on the gloves and on the backpack. And with the talent on the build, the backpack, I went for Adrenaline Rush. Whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy, you gain 20% bonus armor for 5 seconds and it stacks up to 3 times. I'm always in the face of an enemy, so I'm always taking advantage of this. And again, it just keeps me alive. And the chest piece talent that I went for was Unbreakable. When my armor is depleted, I repaired 95% of my armor and that could happen every 60 seconds. Again, another form of self-healing along with everything else. And the holster and knee pads on the build, I went for improvised pieces. We spoke about those before. The improvised knee pads and the holster, I got explosive resistance and armor regen on them both. Both needing a lot of optimization, but they came with extra gear mods. And the gear mods I used was protection from elite. So I've got protection from elites on my holster, my knee pads, my chest piece, my mask, and my backpack. Going over to the stats, it looks like this. I've got 1.6 million total armor. And if we go down, you can see my protection from elites is at 64%. My explosive resistance is also at 66.5%. My incoming repairs is at 40%. And with all this put together, it made for an incredible legendary tank build. I use it all the time when I do legendary content. And it worked exactly as I expected it to. You can see on screen now just how well this legendary tank build is working on legendary Manning National Zoo boss area when the last person standing. And that's it for this build guide video. My aim today was just to explain builds to you. I, I didn't want to just show you a load of builds and tell you what to make because as I said at the start of the video, it's all about you thinking of a task at hand, thinking what you want, looking at everything available and piecing it together like a jigsaw. And then once pieced together, it's all about testing it and then changing the build based on the results from that test. It's the most fun that I have in this game. It really is. Once you've done everything and there's kind of like no more content left to do, just putting builds together to make things easier or better and testing them out is just so much fun. That build tool that I've shown you, again, it's linked down in the video description. Make sure you're checking that out. Use that to piece some builds together. Get on the grind, put them together and see how they do. And if you do want some builds, there's so many builds on YouTube. Every content creator, including myself, throw loads of build videos out for all sorts of content. So just go and watch them, piece them together and see what you think of them. Maybe you'll expand on that build and turn it into your own. But that is now it for this video. I hope it has been helpful. I think I've covered everything I wanted to in this video. Ask any questions down in the video comments. And if you're watching and you're experienced and you think there's something that I've missed, or you just want to have your input, post down below. Let the viewers read through them, see what you think as well. But thank you all so much for watching this. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe to support. And go check out the rest of my beginner guide content down in the video description. There's a playlist there for you to see what else I've got on offer. Until next time, thank you for watching. Stay safe and peace out.